The Night Beat starts right now. A military combat veteran killed in a head-on crash in San Antonio tonight. Those who knew him expressing frustration and hoping to share a message with others before it's too late. And scores sliding downward for a San Antonio restaurant. The discoveries that led to a mandatory reinspection coming up as we go behind the kitchen door. And shots fired at our KSAT 12 news team, then at police. The suspect's final encounter with officers coming up, but first. Take a look at this video, a two story home covered in flames. Firefighters on scene for hours tonight. This is near Alamo Ranch and Alamo Parkway over on the far west side. One of our producers was able to send in this video as firefighters fought flames in the rain. A lightning strike suspected of starting this fire around six this evening. Firefighters say someone heard thunder before seeing a flash and the power going out to the home. Smoke detectors then went off and that's when everyone managed to get out of that home. Emergency responders say they had several calls for lightning strikes to other homes around that same time. The damage to this two story home on Orange Tree is being described tonight as a total loss. Firefighters say this area is prone to lightning strikes. Let's take a live look outside tonight. Live cam along I-10 looking nice. This wasn't always the case around San Antonio. There was some rain earlier, um, actually some rain right out here right now. Yeah, and the rain expected to continue tonight and into tomorrow in the next several days. Adam Casca, we're checking in with you, but first we want to get back to that lightning strike. You, you were able to look up exactly where that happened with our technology. Here. Yeah, I've got a pretty good idea of exactly which lightning bolt it was that was uh, most likely responsible for that uh, fire. And unfortunately, when we often see a lot of lightning. We get some power outages and periodically some attic fires and house fires. So this is the radar from earlier today, close to when that house fire began. Notice 6.30 p.m. starts at 5.45. We're looking at the area of Alamo Ranch, Alamo Ranch Parkway right here, and it's this bolt that hit at about 5.59 p.m. that I suspect is responsible for that fire and I'm just isolating it right there, flashing it on the screen. It's about 1.4 miles to the southwest as a crow flies from Taft High School. I believe that would have been the lightning bolt responsible for that house fire. Right now, the light rain is moving out. It's tapering off, and there's still some activity. It's just south of San Antonio. Moderate rain showers throughout Atascosa County. Good soaking rain there. That's some good, positive, beneficial rain. Some heavier showers, DeWitt County, and uh, or Dimmick County, and then along I-35, Pearsall, Dilly, down toward Catula. Still some lightning associated with that activity. If you missed out on the rain today, you have more opportunities, especially tomorrow. We're going to talk about that in detail and these rain chances for the rest of the week coming right up. Incredible technology you have there. Thank you, Adam, for that explanation. New details released in that deadly shooting at a nail salon this afternoon. The suspected shooter has been identified as 42 year old Kiet Wynn. A mugshot has not been released yet, but we know he faces charges of murder and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Officers say an argument began inside the nail salon on Blanco Road near Parliament before spilling outside, then ending in gunfire. One man was killed. His identity has not been released yet. Police found Wynn near Loop 410 and Blanco. He spent 10 years serving his country as a combat veteran, only to lose his life at home in a violent crash. 33-year-old Jose Luna was killed when a white truck hit him head on. The passenger and driver of that truck, 19-year-old Brian Solis and 20-year-old Joel Terraquez, also killed in that crash. As the night team's Jaffney Gray reports, Luna's family and military brotherhood are left to deal with the loss. My heart's broken. It's in pieces. Sandra Ramos is devastated after the death of her son, Army combat veteran, 33-year-old Jose Luna. And she's not the only one. We're in a dream right now. It's still very fresh. Sunday, just after 2.30 in the morning at the I-35 and Highway 281 interchange, the family says Luna was on his way home from his U.S. Postal Service job when two men collided head-on into his SUV, killing him and themselves. San Antonio police say the two men allegedly fired several several shots at the V lounge before taking off and ramming into Luna. Luna served our country for 10 years. We could survive all the crap and the gunfire and the explosions and for any one of us to go out like this. I was angry. Luna had three combat tours and was awarded two Purple Hearts before retiring. A lot of the guys, um, you know, leaned on each other a lot, and he was a big factor in all that. He was fearless. The, the guy would dash out in front of bullets just to, to save a brother. Funny. He had an old soul with a 
giant kid wrapped around it. And he was known as a professional leader who loved his wife and four young sons to the fullest. He would come in no matter what time it was and get the routine done. Okay, let's wash the bottles. Let's get him fed, let's play with him, walk him around. As they cherish the life Luna lived, his loved ones pray others will learn from this abrupt loss. Everything has a ripple effect. Yeah, <laughs> he ain't going nowhere. He ain't going nowhere, he's always gonna be remembered. The family is now left to figure out how to move forward. Those family members are now gathering support to help Luna's wife and children. Daphne Gray, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jaffney. Well, today in tonight's big story, a man accused of opening fire on two members of our own KSAT family today, then shooting at police. Thankfully, our team members are OK. That gunman, though, now reported to be dead. His identity still has not been released. But tonight we're learning this was his final encounter with police over a span of three days. These events all happening along the 300 block of Noria Street near Navidad Street. The night team's Patty Santos walks us through the scary moments our team endured. I'm with News Media, KSAT 12. They just fired at us. On the phone, KSAT photojournalist Josh Saunders calling 911 for help after running from the scene where he and reporter Dylan Collier were covering the aftermath of a house fire on the 200 block of Noria Street. The family who we were talking with said he's got a gun. They went to the car, he fired at the car, they took off. The team and witnesses were sent running for cover after they say this suspect pointed a gun at them and fired towards them. The man then fled to a nearby home about a block away. Our team was not harmed. Josh, I'm here, Josh, I'm here, I'm alive. On Saturday, police were called to that same home for a call of shots being fired into the air, but they say they had no information that he was a danger to the public. Officers arrived, they uh, attempted to contact him, but they were unable to. The officers remained in the area for the next few hours on Saturday. On Sunday, fire crews were called back to the home following a suspicious fire where shell casings were found. Police showed up around 11 a.m. Monday after the suspect began firing at his family and our crew. He was seen running to a nearby property. Everyone inside was able to get out safely and officers had him surrounded. This was a plan to keep him locked out of the house to make it easier for us to apprehend him. But he saw the officers at the door, started shooting at them through the door, and again, five officers returned fire. The man died at the scene. His name hasn't been released. Five officers are on administrative leave. The neighbors tell us there has been some ongoing feud between family members and that suspect at that home. Uh, police also say the suspect had some prior encounters with law enforcement. Uh, Tim. Thank you, Patty. A car crash taking out the wall of a well-known business on the St. Mary's Strip. Police now say the driver and passenger who plowed into Sings in the early morning hours of July 4th were, quote, uncooperative and belligerent, end quote. The man suspected of being behind the wheel identified as 26-year-old Joey Rodriguez. Police say he was taken to the hospital where he was said to be in possession of drugs. He is expected to face some charges. The other man, 26-year-old Jesus Lasoya, was treated at the scene and arrested for public intoxication. To the latest now on the search for survivors after the building collapsed 12 days ago in Florida. Officials say they have removed nearly 5 million pounds of debris and are now able to reach parts of the rubble that were previously inaccessible. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez tracking the latest. In the rubble in Surfside, Florida, another heartbreaking discovery. Search and rescue crews finding the body of a 28th victim. The team having to pause for lightning, but otherwise working around the clock through torrential rain and strong winds as the outer bands of Tropical Storm Elsa reach South Florida. I'm in awe of the men and women of, of the USAR task force teams who've been continuing to brave Dang dangerous and changing conditions. The search efforts now finally at full capacity now that the section of Champlain Towers South that was left standing has been demolished, making it possible for rescuers to reach areas that were too dangerous to access before. Uh, the heavy equipment is now able to move around the site as needed. Uh, the looming threat of that building, um, the dangerous 
um, situation where debris could fall down is now eliminated. The new access fueling hope for some of the families of the 117 people who remain missing nearly two weeks after the collapse, with officials saying the search will continue 24 hours a day until every single person is accounted for. I pray for the other families that someone, any of us can have some kind of miracle that maybe someone can still be alive underneath there. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Los Angeles. Back here at home, it is a renewed effort built on trust, a centralized location to help those experiencing homelessness here in San Antonio. The new Corazon Day Center and Resource Hub is at 504 Avenue E on the campus of Grace Lutheran Church. The center and the city now teaming up to help. Marjorie White serves as the homeless administrator for the city of San Antonio's Department of Human Services. We know folks are going to come in for food. That's an opportunity for engagement. That's an opportunity to assess their needs, talk to them, build rapport, build trust, figure out what are their goals and how we can help them achieve it. Along with meals, case managers and a place to shower will be made available at that hub. People can also receive access to various forms of transitional housing. The facility will officially open on Thursday. Still ahead on the night beat, some dangerous moments caught on camera as fireworks celebration take a wild turn. Those videos, plus a look at what a fireless fireworks celebration looks like. That's coming up. And we go behind the kitchen door of one Mexican restaurant. What health inspectors uncovered? That's next on the night beat. Medications, pest problems, and a barely passing score. In tonight's Behind the Kitchen Door, we take a look at a Mexican restaurant that was ordered to undergo reinspection. El Sabrosito de Jalisco Mexican Restaurant is located on Naco Perrin Boulevard over on the city's northeast side. The restaurant had scores in the 90s and 80s in the past. In May, it barely passed with a score of 73. Metro Health found live roaches in an unused refrigerator upstairs and other areas of the building. There was also employee medication stored above a food prep area and a concern about not placing dates on prepared foods to avoid spoilage. We are following this story and the scores of several other restaurants around town. Right now on KSAT.com, just click on the story to see the scores. HEB reminding customers of a Tyson chicken recall. It's led HEB to pull some of its products from stores, including the South Flow location, pizza location. The recall impacting many businesses across Texas. More than 8 million pounds of ready to eat chicken products may be contaminated with listeria. The products recalled are the frozen full cooked chicken products produced between December 26, 2020 and April 13th, 2021. At least two people have been reported ill with listeriosis. All right, when the entire country sets off pyrotechnics, there's bound to be some problems. And there were many people capturing fireworks displays, some of them proving to be dangerous this year, like this one out in Memphis, Tennessee, where people were launching fireworks across lanes of traffic and towards a group of people in another parking lot. Those people then returning fire as drivers tried to dodge the bottle rockets. There were also displays that started off normal before becoming massive explosions like this one. Take a look. Yikes. Police in Ohio say stacks of fireworks piled up next to a rental truck were lit, setting off the explosions yesterday in Toledo. Four people were hurt, but everyone is expected to survive. That truck was packed with fireworks and was parked on the street during a 4th of July block party. Investigators still trying to figure out what set off those bundles of fireworks. Well, looking at all of that, maybe these were the smart people. There were others who tried celebrating the 4th of July without a traditional fireworks display. The Tahoe National Forest had a celebration to keep the forest safe. Take a listen. Oh. Yeah, two large rolls of bubble wrap were unrolled as people marched behind, creating a sound resembling fireworks. One couple started the fire safe tradition 14 years ago. That is the coolest thing I've seen. Today. I know Nobody's the kids getting hurt by the bubble wrap. <laughs> the kids are having fun. It kind of does sound like it too. Yeah, take a live look outside with uh, live cam tonight. 75 degrees after that rain moving through. Some really good rain. Aside from the lightning strikes that caused some problems tonight, good rain. Yeah, beneficial rainfall yeah. for sure. Good. Some of it even fell on the aquifer recharge zone and the drainage zone, which is nice to see. So that should help the aquifer out. And we had some minor flash flooding in parts of northern Bear County. So that was an issue. But overall, 
will take the rain. And if you missed out on it, don't worry, you have more opportunities starting first thing tomorrow morning. So let's get right to it. And first uh, take a look at this picture and we know how the rainfall can be around here. Very hit or miss. Some folks get a couple inches. Other folks just have sunshine. So here's a post from Timberwood Park earlier today. After over a week, it was our finally our turn in Timberwood Park with two inches and it did not disappoint. And behind that rain, Canyon Lake, beautiful sunset, even in Comfort, Texas. I was actually just up in, up in Comfort yesterday. Beautiful area. And look at that gorgeous paintbrush like sunset in comfort. Look at the rainfall estimates by Doppler radar today. Everywhere you see a bright color on the map indicates that some rain fell in that area. So you see a lot in Valverde County, but particularly Kerr County, Bandera, Medina, Frio County, yeah, and even Northern Bear County. Those are the sweet spots. Now these are actual rain gauge measurements. So just north of Bandera, 2.19. You get north of Hondo, 2.33 inches. Chavano Park, 2.86. Alamo Ranch, over two inches along with Holotus. Then you get to the east side of town, St. Hedwig, oh, barely a third of an inch. Elmendorf, under a tenth of an inch, of course. Big disparities between the haves and the have nots. And you look at the radar right now, the light rain mostly coming to an end in San Antonio, a little bit in Southern Bear County. Now most of it's in Atascosa County, and that's that light, gentle, good soaking rain. Great for the ranches and pastures and farms and gardens. We like to see that. And now into Webb County, we have further development, some thunderstorms. Dimmit County as well around Carrizo Springs, Springs. That's part of Texas that could use the rain in Catula right along I-35. And then still Brackettville to Del Rio, just south and along 90, a few downpours left over. And we can't rule out more development as we go through the night. It's just going to be more isolated in nature. And hey, we weren't the only ones getting in on the rain today. Other parts of Texas seeing those showers and thunderstorms. This is a 12-hour loop, so you see all the way up near Lubbock, San Angelo, then of course our neck of the woods as well. More opportunities tomorrow. And then we'll still have some rain chances daily Friday into the weekend. It's just the quantity of those showers will be more limited. The coverage is going to be more limited. They're not going to be as numerous in terms of the number of showers that we see developing sporadically during the day. We briefly hit 91 today at the airport. Just over three tenths of an inch of rain right now. We're at 76. Temperatures aren't going to change much through the night. 73 now Uvalde and Hondo. 78 Gonzales, New Braunfels. A comfortable but muggy 75 degrees. Canyon Lake, you're at 74 along with Castroville. So tomorrow, mid 70s, some spotty or s scattered, I should say, showers, a few downpours for the morning commute. So first thing tomorrow morning, we'll see some more action out there. And then it's going to be off and on in nature, scattered across our area, intermittent and sporadic throughout the day tomorrow, mid 80s for highs. We see a similar pattern, but again, the coverage isn't quite as widespread day by day. We see that coverage more limited. So nice to see anyone getting it, though. That's great. This time of year. Yeah, thank you, Adam. All right, Craig, the NBA Finals ready to tip off tomorrow. And I have an update on Giannis Antetokounmpo, whether or not he'll be available for Game 1 after he is injured in the Eastern Conference Finals. When we come back, an update before the NBA Finals tip off. Good sign is that's him getting on their charter to Phoenix that landed earlier today. And the number one pick in the NFL signs on the dotted line coming up. Is awesome. Reminding San Antonio fans of the Spurs' glory days, fans in Milwaukee welcome home the Bucks at the airport as Eastern Conference Finals champions in big board sports. This is a good sign if you're a Milwaukee fan. Giannis Antetokounmpo boarding the team charter for Phoenix today to tip off the NBA Finals tomorrow night. That's because Giannis has not played since Game 4 of the Eastern Conference Finals against Atlanta when he hyperextended his knee. Even without him, the Bucks were able to clinch the Eastern Conference Finals in Game 6 with a 118-107 victory to close out the series four games or two behind Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday combined for 59 points. Middleton came to life in the third quarter when he scored 23 of his 32 points, including 16 in a row. Now Milwaukee's headed to the NBA Finals for the first time since 1974 in search for their second NBA title in franchise history. The Greek freak is now listed as doubtful for tomorrow's game one of the NBA Finals, but is making progress. It was awesome. Again, I'm still kind of on this high, but now I'm going to the finals. Uh, it's just cool to think, again, as a little kid, man, this is like, this is what you watch the playoffs for. This is, this is like all the moments that like I felt as a little kid watching TV. I lived them and, and went through them 
and now I get to go to the finals and see what this is about. So, uh, again, man, I'm just like, I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic. The Phoenix Suns are in the finals for the first time since 1993, looking for their first ever NBA championship in franchise history and will be five and a half point favors in game one at home tomorrow night. One thing these two teams have in common is that their head coaches are a product of the Greg Popovich coaching tree. Milwaukee's Mike Budenholzer, who was Pop's right hand man for a decade, and Monty Williams, who not only played for Pop, but also worked in the front office. Now they face off on the biggest stage the NBA has to offer. Unbelievably grateful for the blessings that I've received. Um, as, a, as a coach, um, working with people like Randy, getting to coach the players, moments like this, um, just out there on the floor talking to the, a few of the guys, they were like trying to figure out the feelings we were all having. And um, I remember, you know, being in those moments when I was, you know, in San Antonio, it's hard to describe. And here's a look at the NBA Finals' first four games. The first two will be in Phoenix starting tomorrow night. The second two will start on Sunday and Wednesday. will be in Milwaukee. It's all live right here on KSAT 12. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The number one draft pick in the NFL has finally agreed to his first ever professional contract. That's after Trevor Lawrence signed a five-year contract worth nearly $37 million, or just over $24 million of that, and a signing bonus will be paid in 15 days. The fifth year is a team option, according to ESPN. It means a rookie quarterback is now set to join the Jacksonville Jaguars in the open training camp in three weeks. He's expected to be their starting quarterback after going 34-2 and while at Clemson. The Dallas Cowboys kicked off their training camp in California two weeks from tomorrow. And over the next two weeks, we'll be revealing the top five priorities the Cowboys will have as they return to Oxnard following a 6-10 and 10 finish. The health of Dak Prescott will be primary as he returns to the field for the first time since his horrific ankle injury against the Giants last October. Since then, he has worked himself back just seven months after two surgeries to repair the compound fracture and dislocation, telling us he has buried the ankle issue on the weekend of single de Mayo and asked the media to help put it behind him by stop asking about it. That said, all eyes will be on the franchise quarterback who signed a record four-year year $160 million deal that included a record $66 million signing bonus and an average salary of $40 million a year. The Cowboys report to training camp on July 20th in case that 12 sports will be there. The winningest coach in UCLA history, Terry Donahue, has passed away. Surrounded by his family, Donahue passed away at his home in Newport Beach following a two-year battle with cancer, according to the school. Donahue coached the Bruins from 1976 to 1995 with 98 conference wins, which is still the most in Pac-12 history. It's also became the first coach to win bowl games in seven consecutive seasons, including three Rose Bowl victories. Terry Donahue leaves us at the age of 77. Right. Round of 16 today at Wimbledon. Men's singles, top-seeded Novak Djokovic, cruise past Christian Garin, delivered this spectacular cross-court shot during a long rally in the second set. The Joker takes it 6-2, 6-4, 6-2. On the other side of the bracket, eight-time champion Roger Federer punched his ticket to the quarterfinals with a convincing three-set victory over Lorenzo Sanago, 7-5, 6-4, 6-2. He's now the oldest Wimbledon quarterfinalist in the open era at 39 years of age. In the women's singles, young American phenom Coco Gauff saw her run in today against Germany's Angelique Gerber. Goff kept it close but could not pull out a set victory. She falls 6-4, 6-4. The quarterfinals will continue on Wednesday. Sign up now for the Haney & Company Charity Golf Tournament set for August the 23rd at the Corey Golf Club, benefiting the Society of St. Vincent de Paul, more specifically St. Vinny's Bistro that feeds the homeless of the Haven for Hope and working poor of Bear County. Just go to their website right now, HaneyCPAs.com slash golf. The earlier you sign up, the earlier you get to know the benefits, and we'll be passing those along with you as we get closer to that start date of August the 23rd. And a bad day on the golf course is always better than a good day at the office. Absolutely. <laughs> well said. You get a Monday off. What a deal. Right. Thanks, Greg. <laughs> sure. We'll be right back.